so clustering in r so you have different uh, algorithms and in r to do anything you have more than uh, 20 package basically right? so there are almost 90 plus packages in r for cluster analysis and finite mixture models right so obviously you can understand that there are so many and we'll be using one of the very basic which comes with base r which is uh, k means k with a small k and there is obviously a k with a capital k also which is present in the amap package we won't be using that we'll be using the small k means packing so let's look at the important steps so now uh, um, first of all you have to prepare your data so you will be removing uh, empty values that is na values from your data right so what you are seeing on the screen is just an empty shell structure uh, later on we'll be doing that with a hands-on also right so you will extract the data you will save it somewhere right and then you will remove the na values from that you standardize the data by means of scaling so that all the dimensions are given equal importance and then you will step into hierarchical agglomerative clustering so it goes by you will select an object name allocate first create the distance metric by using the euclidean method use the edge cluster package to actually create the uh, create the clustering uh, uh, model save it with some name and then you can use this for a plot so you can plot this model right and then you can use this to cut your data into five different clusters we'll be just uh, using some existing data so uh, let's say uh, the slide previous to this okay so i'm saying require data sets so i'm just loading this data sets right and i'm saying data so you have the usa rs data okay fine and i'm using a variable name called as usa in which i'm saving this data again but i'm doing something like an na.omit because we know that if you use an na.omit it will isolate the NAs and delete the whole rows where NA data is present, right? So it will remove the data wherein if you have an NA, it will isolate that and remove it. Now you can save this as my data and just do some transformation. So we are going to scale the data. So I'm going to scale it using the scale functionality, right? So you have done the scaling part. Now you will be using the hierarchical clustering. So I'm going to create a variable called say suppose with D in which I'm saying allocation distance. So I'm computing the distance matrix on the USA data. Method is equal to Euclidean. Right. Uh, so in fit one allocation sign h class so i'm running different iterations like right. in that i'm passing the distance matrix method is equal to word dot d so you have different methods which are already available if you saw the linkage function we had seen the single complete average centroid approach and all those things so these are the various approaches which are present so you can refer to the help file wherein you will be getting the list of the same so i'm just going to run this quickly with the fit one to fit six so that i'm just going to change these options and the rest of the things remain the same so from award d i'm going to d2 right and then i'm saying single i'm going to save it in fit okay i'm just i have just renamed the previous one with the d2 on fit six i'm just renaming that to two okay so fit one fit two fit three is done now we'll be doing it for fit four and in this case we are saying the complete linkage function and rename the object as fit four similarly just use the up arrow key change this to average make this fit five and centroid and change this to fit six it should be among the six 
So now let's plot these to have a look over here. So plot fit one. You can see the dendrogram over here. Right. So obviously you are not aware of the data, so you won't uh, really directly understand this. But this uh, makes sense uh, if the data is small. If it is very huge, then it doesn't make sense. So these are the outcomes that the state have been all these things given at different levels of height. So say at this specific level, you can see that if people who are from this height, then there is a rule again. And then again, if the height is this much, if the height is this much, then specifically a person is from Missouri. That's what you can draw as a conclusion. So I'm just going to close this and further process this. So what you're going to do now is you're just saying groups or you can keep on doing the plots. Be a little bit of difference in each of these. Right, so now in fit three, if you can see, the scale has changed drastically, and the whole structure of the dendrogram has changed. Right, what was looking very flat over there, it's looking comparatively very different over here. Can do a fit four also. Again, it's different from the previous one. This is because of the uh, matrix method, whether you're using the central, the, uh, the the centroid method, whether you're using the single linkage, right? All those things because of this, it's changing. So you can again do for the fifth one also. And for the sixth one. Now you can bunch up these things and you can say groups equation sign cut tree it's a different algorithm itself so you're saying fit one so what you're trying to do is you're just trying to do some housekeeping over here so you're basically cutting it into five clusters and that's also something you can do and have a look at this also with the plot do this way also just chopping it off so now I'm using rect dot h cluster right. and in that I'm passing fit one I'm saying number of clusters has to be five and the color like the border color has to be red Right. So that's what you're doing over here. So these are the groups. Right. So I'm just zooming this so that you can have a look. So you have basically partitioned into different bases this value. So you have just partitioned this. So as you can see on the screen, it's showing the same picture. So a dendrogram of agglomerative hierarchical clustering is grouped into five clusters. That's what we can see. Now, there is a function called as PV cluster in the PV cluster package, which provides P values for hierarchical clustering based on multi-scale bootstrap resampling. So obviously when you talk about bootstrapping that means you are doing like uh, keeping extracting the same data again and again from a whole set of population randomly and you are allowing replace is equal to true that means the same observation might be picked up more than once now you're doing this in absence of exposure to complete population available to you so that this sample which you're extracting is somewhere becoming closer to the real population that is what the concept of bootstrapping is Right. So these clusters are highly supported by the data which have larger p values. Right. But you have to be very aware that the PV, PV cluster clusters columns, not rows. So you have to transpose your data before using them. Right. So 
uh, traditionally what happens your data is kept as a column so based on that the clustering happens but this specific algorithm works on rows rather than columns so you'll have to transpose your data before you go ahead and do this processing so first of all you have to install this package and then load ev cluster package right and then you will just say something like a fit allocation sign ev cluster which wherein you're going to call your data we have already saved that in my data if you remember we had done that scaling part then we say method dot h cluster is equal to ward it's the name of the scientist and method dot distance computation is euclidean So it says that the word method has been replaced word dot d so it has done that automatically and then these are the push trappings which has been internally done and then we can do a plot of this plot of fit so here you have your data brown Right. an analysis of what is the output is shown on the next screen when we'll have a look at this right. so this is your output this is the height this is the urban population this is talking about a variable the percentage of rape or the percentage of murder and assault right so we'll have a look at this uh, on the screen just uh, on the previous screen if you can see there is something called as PV rect right which is an additional parameter if you want to check and you're giving the confidence interval over here so it's okay so what is basically PV cluster? PV cluster provides two types of P values AU that is approximately unbiased which you had seen over here AU unbiased P value and BP that is the bootstrapped probability value. So obviously when you are uh, when you talk about something like decision tree and all those things the bootstrapped is a good thing to look at right. The AU value which is computed by multi-scale bootstrap resampling is a better approximation to unbiased P value then bp value computed by normal bootstrap resampling right so it, it says that the au that is the unbiased p value is a far better method of approximating to the unbiased p value than bp value computed by normal bootstrap resampling right but if you are a person who is into machine learning you might yourself uh, get into the bootstrapping aspect and create a decision tree which is uh, which you can control PV cluster performs hierarchical cluster analysis via function H cluster and automatically computes the P values for all the clusters constrained, contained in the clustering of original data. Right, So it will do the hierarchical cluster analysis via the H cluster. So you have used the H cluster prior to this. right? So the PV cluster is going to call the same function and it computes the clusters but it gives importance to significance test. Whereas in the prior case, the p-values were not considered over here. The p-values are considered as part of the cluster formation process. It also provides graphical tools such as plot function or useful PV rect function, which highlights clusters with relatively high or relatively very low p-values. So it's just a way of uh, redrawing it again. So importance or uh, importance can be given to extreme p-values, right? So to highlight them. Now you have an example uh, where we will be using uh, the PV cluster again. So in this case, we are again going to uh, call uh, the same data, right? The USA data, but it's not the scale data. So I'm going to just pass that into fit seven because we had done till fit uh, fit six. So an extension. So we say PV cluster, 
bracket pass through as a method dot h cluster if you remember we had said over there that what dot d could be the output because it has been renamed to this comma method dot distance is equal to u c l i d e e n euclidean and yes you will just run this we'll do the bootstrapping for you first right and after this you can just do a plot of the same again so just doing that again so get the dendrogram with the fit values right and then you can say pv rect fit 7 alpha is equal to 0.95 Right, so we can see this highlight which has happened over here. Obviously, you cannot see the box, but this is ideally creating a box over here, right, which you can see to a certain extent when you're seeing it over here because as you're expanding, R is not able to show it properly. Right, so the highlighted portion is shown over here. The values on the edges of the clustering are P values, basically percentages if you multiply by 100. And the red values are the AUP values, right? And the green values are the bootstrap values. Clusters with AU larger than 95% are highlighted by rectangles, which are strongly supported by the data. So again, a significance test is done. And if it is larger than 95%, only then it is highlighted by a rectangle. 